नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई ई टी एन सी आर टीज लाइव फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम ऑफ मैथ्स फॉर ऑल द नाइन्थ क्लास चिल्ड्रन वी आर हियर विद द टॉपिक लीनियर इक्वेजन्स इन टू वेरिएबल्स पार्ट वन सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर बिकॉज इट्स बिग चैप्टर वी हैव डिवाइडेड इट इन टू टू पार्ट्स वी हैव अ गेस्ट विद अस सो लेट मी प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस हर टू ऑल ऑफ यू शी इज मिसिज बीना प्रकाश मैम अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू Thank you, Tanvi ji, and good afternoon to all my learners. Good afternoon to you too, ma'am, from our entire team. And uh, let me introduce you to all our viewers. Ma'am is a senior PGT in mathematics from Campion School, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. And uh, we are going to start this conversation on this topic, that is linear equations in two variables, part one, very very soon. But before that, let me just tell you that if you have any questions, any queries, reach out to us. You can watch us on Evidya channel number nine at. this moment and also you can contact us on our number that is 8800440559 If you want to email us your queries, the email ID would be dth dot class nine at the rate c i e t dot n i c dot i n. So let's begin and let's ask, ma'am. Ma'am, what is this chapter all about? Do all the students need to carry a pen and paper for solving these answers today? Uh, good evening, all learners. Actually, we are taking up this chapter linear equation in one variable, which has been introduced in the previous class. That is class eight. You all have some basic information about this. To start with, what is a linear equation? That is what I am going to explain. To explain that, I am taking up through this example. Just see, read this question. In a cricket match, Ram makes sixty-six runs. Rajesh makes six more than half of the run made by Ram. So what is that we have? We have some information. What is that we need to do? The question says find the runs made by Rajesh. So you are finding the runs that's made by Rajesh with this given information. So how do we frame that expression? That is what is important. In a cricket match, Ram makes sixty-six runs. So information about Ram's in, run is there. But Rajesh is making six more than so the run, runs made by Rajesh. Rajesh is 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 means we put an equal to sign when we write an expression. Every every element has its own representation. The word is is translated into equal to. So what I have written on the left hand side is representing the run made by Rajesh. Since both the names started with R, I couldn't use that R. So I'm writing the name. This is the way to re represent the things. Now Rajesh is making six more than six more more means plus than half half of the run that Ram made. So Ram made sixty six runs. So it's half. So can't we solve this and get the value of Rajesh run? So we have to frame an expression. to get the answer so that comes out to be 39 so how many runs did rajesh make 39 runs so this is with this numbers that we have fine now we move to the next question the next question says ansh scores twice rahul score in mathematics the score of ansh is score let ansh score a and the score is Twice Rahul scored. Ansh scored twice. Rahul had scored. So Rahul, I'm sorry. Rahul stands for. I take R. R. Where these marks? That is <clears throat> the marks of neither Ansh nor Rahul is specified here. So both are not known to us. So when the numbers are not known to us, we make use of literals. That is A B C D. English alphabets we use. So we can represent it this way to make it clear that A stands for Ansh score, R stands for An Rahul score. So this is the first expression that we have derived. So Ansh score is twice Rahul score in mathematics. The total of their marks put together is sixty nine. So there is another statement here. When you add the total, that is together. When you put the marks together, the marks of Ansh and Rahul put together. So this is the second expression that we have. Ansh and Rahul's marks together is sixty-nine. So we have framed some expression here. 
in terms of the literals that is a b c d which are unknowns so we are finding unch because that's unknown we have to find unch mark so what we do is we have since we are finding unch mark the mark that is r which is representing a in terms of which can be represented in terms of a will be written this way that is a plus a on 2 is 69 so this is an expression that i have written where we rewrite this step on the left hand side and it comes out to be 3a on 2 is equal to 69 so i can always write it as 138 so what i have written it's an expression in some unknown quantities there were two unknowns i reduced it to one so it's an expression in some unknown quantity written using the alphabets and some real numbers so this type of expression that we have is known as a linear expression that is ax plus b is now a linear equation the expression of the type ax plus b is known equal to 0 is known as a linear equation now let's identify this word linear what does that mean linear means a straight line what does straight line mean here that is when we join make a graph of out of it we come across the graph as a straight line that's the term that we have for linear and the characteristics of this linear equation is its degree will always be 1 that is whatever is the unknown now you come across this a x b they are all so many it's expressed in terms of literals there is no numeral seen in it so how do we express it it's a linear equation in x it is in x that is x is the unknown quantity a and b are some real numbers a and b happens to be some real numbers as we see this we just read this the same way it is actually a is equal to what we can divide this number by 3 so that comes out to be 46 so i can write this statement as a minus 46 is equal to 0 so this is an expression which is very similar to this why is it similar because the unknown that we have expressed is x here we have it as x and a and b are constants so any expression which is in the form of ax plus b equal to 0 is known as a linear equation in one variable there is only one quantity which is varying here x is the varying quantity right and its degree is 1 now equation the term equation has come equation says it's the equality of two expressions as we see it's left hand side it's ax plus b right hand side is zero that is the value of x plus b for some value of x should be equal to zero or what value of x that's what we have as known as solution of a linear equation now how do we solve this linear equation it's solving of linear equation that is what value of x will give this expression that is the right hand side of this expression zero how do we solve it for solving it what we do is the question says to find the value of x which is a varying quantity that means apart from this x the rest everything should be taken to the right side that is again let me make it very clear we need to reduce this number somehow to zero Now, how will this number be reduced to zero? This is reduced to zero by this operation. That is, what added to five, what added to five, will make that number zero. We will have to add some number to this to have this resultant resultant of the two as zero. So, what is that number? We know that it's the additive inverse. ulta opposite of that sign so it is minus of 5 now minus of 5 is written on this left hand side it has to be balanced we cannot just keep it on one side it has to be balanced you have to add the same number on the right hand side so that way the left hand side is reduced that is 5 plus minus 5 is reduced to 0 and you have the expression as 
3x is equal to minus 5. Now we have not yet arrived at the answer. We get 3x is equal to minus 5. We now want the value of x. That is, we have to eliminate this 1 from here. Now how is that eliminated? 3 gets removed from by dividing it by 3. So that means we have the next operation. We will have to divide the whole expression. We will divide 3x equal to minus 5. We have to divide this expression by a number that is 3. Only then 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. So only then the coefficient of x becomes 1. So same operation to be done on the right hand side of the equality. You have equal. So what will the left hand side now read the whole expression as? We have x is equal to minus 5 upon 3. So this is known as the solution of this linear equation 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. So what is that number which is making that linear expression left hand side 0 is minus 5 upon 3. Let's verify it. Is that so? Let's take up the verification part. How do we verify? We take up the left hand side expression. What is the left hand side expression? It is 3 times x plus 5. Now replace the value of x as minus 5 on 3. And the rest continues. We continue with the rest of the expression. What is that we get on the solving this? Minus 5 on 3 is multiplied to 3. 3 gets cancelled. We have a minus 5. And minus 5 plus 5 comes out to be 0. So isn't that the value that we have on the right hand side? That means it is this value of x that is minus 5.3 that reduces this to 0. So that's known as that is x is equal to minus 5.3 is known as solution which is also known as the root of that's a term that we have. So be familiar with these terms root of the equation that is solution of the equation. So we use the term root for finding the value of x of any equation. Now this is algebraic part. Now I have made a number line along with it. What is that we have for? We have it for representing that answer on the number line. So we are trying to express the answer in terms of number line also. So we will just mark this point on the number line. The marking of the number line, the marking of real numbers on the number line, we last class in the first chapter that is real numbers. So we just identify where will it be minus 5 upon 3. Minus 5 upon 3, yaad karke dekho bachcho kaise kiya tha humne. What we have to do, we'll have to divide each your length into three equal parts. And since the number is on the left hand side, we can go for this. This is third part, one, two, three. So which part are we taking up? We are taking up the fifth part. Count one, two, three, four, five. It is this part. So very closer to minus 2. So x is equal to minus 5 on 3. This is a value which is known as minus 5 on 3. So that is how we solve a linear equation in one variable. Now here that is the next question that we have. 2x minus 5. Same way how do we start with solving of linear equation. We take up 2x. Now we add 5 to it and that is equated to 0. We will add 5 to left hand side. Same number is to be added to the right hand side. Now instead of that you can do one more thing. You know that the number on the left hand side has to be shifted. We need to shift. So we shift it to the other side. When you shift it to the other side, remember the rules that we have for algebraic expressions. We shift it with respect to the sign that we require that is its opposite of sign what is that we have on the left hand side it's negative of 5 so it goes to the right hand side as plus 5 it's the same thing that we are, we are at making a 0 on the left hand side here I'm shifting it so that gives us equal to 5 and then to get the value of x up is good divide here divide by 2 so both sides are going to divide so that means 2 goes to the right side as divided by that's the meaning of that statement. It is 5 upon 2. So that's the solution for this equation. 2x minus 5 equal to 0. Now 2x minus 5 equal to 0. The root of this is the root of that equation. Fine. Now where is that to be located? 5 upon 2. It's a positive number. 
5 upon 2 is a positive number means the division that we have each division has to be divided into 2 2 parts so let us divide that into 2 2 parts on dividing it into this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so where is that located where can we locate the point 5 upon 2 1 2 3 4 and that's 5 so this is x is equal to 5 on 2 a solution for this equation so this is the way to solve a linear equation in one variable fine now the next equation that you see is 3y equal to 4 now there we see that it is 3y equal to 4 here i had used x so that says that the unknowns or the varying quantities that we have can be represented as a, B, C, X, Y, whatever it is. Now, this I am using it in terms of Y, X, just because we have a way that is on number line when we express, we usually take up this number line, horizontal line as X axis. So, that's the reason why we had taken everything in terms of X. Now, since it is Y, we will consider this as Y axis, fine. Right? So, this is 3Y equal to 4. So, let's solve this further. So, what we have from here, we can directly get the answer. It is but there is a constant on the other side. So, what will the value of y be? y will all be divided by 4 divided by 3. So, you can locate the point. As I said, you can you have to divide each into 3 parts. So, this fourth part is 4 upon 3. So, we have the value of this equation as 3y equal to 4. So, any linear equation. Now, I will generalize again once again can be written as ax plus b where a and b are constants we can also write it as ay plus b equal to zero there were a and b are real numbers so we are solving for because that's unknown we have unknown quantity is the x and the y fine now we look to the linear equations in two variables now let me read up this question what does this question say cost of three tables sorry it should have been both are tables. Let me name it as chairs. Fine. The cost of three tables and eight chairs is 1200. What? It's a statement form. I want to write it in an expression form. Now, the expression form is I have purchased three tables and eight chairs. The total cost of the two, Domo Mila ke, 1200 rupees. Hai. Here, Table ka bhi cost nahi malum hai chair ka bhi cost nahi malum hai. Doesn't matter. So what we do is, we have to frame the expression. What equation will be getting? The expression that we will be framing is, let me take the take cost of the table be T and the cost of the cost of the chair be C. So what do I write? Three tables. Three tables and it's plus eight chairs the cost of this is 1200 so what have we framed this is known as an equation this is an equation and what do we see in this equation again unknown t and c why are they unknown because we do not know the value of table and chair so we just expressed it in that as the together will be 1200. So, this is the way to express this statement. Now, on expressing it, we find that it comes out to be an equation. This is an equation because left hand side we have one expression, right hand side also you have an expression. Here it is a value. So, not all the time you get a value, it may be an expression form. So, this is known as a linear equation in two variables. Two unknowns are there T and C. There are two unknowns. Hence, it's a linear equation in two variables. <clears throat> now, let's take up the next one. The sum of perimeter of square and the circle is 108. The perimeter, that is you are adding up something. What is to be added? Perimeter of what? A square and the circle. Now, when you talk about square, what does, what do we, what information do we have regarding square? Square is a figure where all sides are equal so we need to know the side of one side of the square and circle is something which is expressed in terms of the radius it's in terms of radius 
So what is required? The side of the square and the radius of the circle, which is not mentioned in this question. Is it mentioned anywhere? But instead what is mentioned is the sum of the perimeter. That is, you have to find the perimeter of a square. If one side of a square is x, so what will its perimeter be? It will be 4 times x. That's the perimeter of a square. Next, the perimeter of a circle. That's the circumference of a circle. It is 2 pi r. The 2 added gives us 108. So that's an expression that we have. Now here x and r are unknown. 4, 2, pi, 108, they are all numbers. So we have these numbers in combination with unknowns and unknowns. So here there are two unknowns, x and r, because there are two objects here, square and circle. So we come across an equation because the left hand side is equated to something, it's 108. So that means it is an equation in two unknowns, that is in two variables. So such equations, they are known as the equation in two variables. <coughs> it's a linear equation in two variables because each expression, we find that its degree is 1. Its degree is 1. So any expression where we find the degree of the variables as 1, these x and y are variable here, a, b, c, they are constants. So therefore, this is a linear equation in <coughs> two variables. Fine? Fine. So now, here. Ma'am, would you like to uh, give the next equation to our children as homework? Okay. How much time is left, Tanmiji? Last one minute, ma'am. Okay. Then in that case, we'll take this in the next class. Okay. We'll continue with this night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, for any questions, for any queries, ma'am, uh, students can contact you anytime, right? Yes, yeah, sure. Definitely. Okay. Thank I would you. like to get the responses. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us today. And uh, the way you solved each and every equation, it was wonderful uh, to know that it maths is actually easy. And uh, most of the students, they fear from uh, maths and they say it's very difficult. But you make it, uh, you make the subject look easy and uh, doable as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all the children as well. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this maths class. For any questions, for any queries, uh, you can always contact us on our email ID which is dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in. And uh, regarding this uh, topic that is linear equations in two variables, this was the first part and we will be taking the part two very, very soon. So keep your questions ready and share them with us anytime, any day. So we will be more than happy to answer that. Thank you once again and stay here because upcoming program is a social science program for all the ninth class children and the topic of discussion is going to be India, its size and location. So this is chapter number one that you are going to study. So please be here and raise your questions for sure. Before leaving, just want to remind you all once again that NCRT textbooks for this new academic session 2023-2024 are all available throughout the country. You can either go to the sales counter directly and purchase these textbooks from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they are located in New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, Guwahati. Uh, so you can go and uh, purchase them or you can simply sit at your home and place an order through the help of the website that is ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in. Place an order and you will receive your textbooks at your home with no delivery charge at all. And if you simply want to uh, download the soft copy or the PDF version that we say, you can go to NCRT, Deeksha or e Parchala website or their mobile applications. So there are multiple mediums through which you can purchase these textbooks and I really hope that you are going to start studying these textbooks very, very soon. So thank you once again. Have a great day ahead and I will take a leave of you. Namaskar.